This will be part three of the Acts overview. The Acts of the Apostles. And we've made it to chapter 19. And in chapters 19 through 20, you have the third missionary trip of Paul. And around this time, Paul writes Romans and First and Second Corinthians and Galatians. And in Acts 19, you got Paul in Ephesus. In Acts 19, 11 and 12, it says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So, just from a handkerchief or an apron being sent to somebody, it could make somebody's disease go away, or an evil spirit go away from somebody. Now, that's what we need today. But God's not doing things this way. Remember, it's the Jews that require a sign. And God gave these gifts to the apostles so that they could go confirm the words with signs following. And since the book of Acts is a transition period, and uh, it's going from Jew to Gentile, you see these sign gifts through the book of Acts, and they're going to slowly go away in the transition period. But Paul has the gift of healing, and nobody has this power today. Anybody who tries to sell you a handkerchief to heal your mamma or papa is just after your money. You know, if they've got the gift of healing, then why don't they go heal all the people that supposedly got the corona? Or why don't they go get the evil spirits out of Lady Gaga? Why don't they... they send uh, some handkerchiefs to Hollywood and get the evil spirits out of everybody. It's because they don't have these gifts. In Acts 19.19, 19, it says, Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So they had some bad books. They which used curious arts brought their books together and they burned them. This reminds me of when I got saved and I threw out all of my rock CDs. And, you know, a lot, somebody said, why don't you just sell them? Well, I don't want to sell my rock CDs to somebody so that they can go down the same road that I was going. You know, that wouldn't make sense. But look at the outcome of what happened when they got rid of those books. It says in Acts 19.20, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So by getting rid of those things, you, you let the Word of God grow in your life. So mightily grew the Word of God. You get rid of that junk and get in the book and watch the Word of God grow in you. And then in Acts 20, Paul raises Eutychus from the dead. Eutychus was asleep while Paul was long preaching in Acts 20 and verse 9. It says, And there stood in a window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep, and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down and with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. So Paul obviously had the signs of an apostle. He brought Eutychus back. And Mark sixteen seventeen through 20, like I said before, that shows you the signs the apostles had that the Lord gave to them so that they could confirm the word with signs following. These signs are what you see throughout the book of Acts. These were to confirm the word with signs following. This is why 1 Corinthians one twenty two says the Jews require a sign. The apostles were doing these signs and miracles to convince unbelieving Jews that the word was true. And Paul speaks to the Ephesian elders in this chapter in Acts 20.24, 20, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So Paul says, Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Paul had seen the third heaven. He had seen Jesus Christ. He has gotten revelation from God. He didn't have a wife or kids. His body was hurting, and he was ready to leave, ready to finish his course with joy. He said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. In Acts twenty twenty six through 27, it says, Wherefore I 
take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. That should be your goal, is to declare everything the Word says. I don't want there to be any part of the Bible that I can't talk about or that I'm afraid to talk about. It says in Acts 20, 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. That famous verse right there shows you that Jesus Christ has God's blood in his veins. It says to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. In Acts 20, 29 through 30, it says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. This is what the cults do. They come into your assembly, and they lead away the simple men with their perverse teachings. They are wolves, and the pastor needs to teach the people so that the wolves have a harder time taking them. In Acts 20, 31, it says, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone, night and day with tears. Paul was warning people. We need to be warning people. Warn the lost about hell. Warn the unruly. Warn the Christians about living for the flesh. Warn everyone night and day with tears. You're going to look like a conspiracy theorist. You're going to look like Noah or somebody probably. Imagine how Noah looked, preaching that the rain was going to come when it had never rained. Preaching the flood was coming, but yet it had never rained before. In Acts 21, Paul goes to Jerusalem. In 21 through 28, you have Paul's arrest and journey to Jerusalem. During these times, Paul would have written Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. In Acts 2022, 20, or in Acts 22, Paul talks about his conversion. And you should never stop talking about your conversion. When you, when you are always with the same group of Christians, they may hear about your conversion story a hundred times, but you can tell by the look on their face that they never get tired of it. Acts 23, you got the plot to kill Paul. If you are really doing something for the Lord, then I guarantee you that someone wants you dead, just like they did Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, Stephen, James, and John. The world hates Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ lives in you. So there was a plot to kill Paul in Acts 23. In Acts 24, Paul goes before Felix. And in Acts 24, 14, you know what they say to Paul? It says, But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy... So worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things that are written in the law and the prophets. Paul was called a heretic by people for believing all things that were written in the law and in the prophets. So notice they call Paul a heretic. If you have taught any Bible doctrine at all, then you are bound to have been called an heretic. Especially if you share your teachings online. If you, I mean, if you just taught in a church or just preached in a church, then you probably never really have anyone with enough guts to come up to you and be critical about what you've said. But people are different online. They will call you an heretic for saying anything that goes against them, and they're comfortable doing that behind a computer screen. So a lot of people think that, you know, the uh, the Internet teachings is is just nonsense, and it's fake, and all this, It's not. it's not real enough. Or they see it as a waste of time. But, you know, you get a lot more persecution online than you do teaching at church. I've never had anybody at church just stop me and tell me, you're a heretic, you're teaching wrong, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. But on every single lesson that I put on the internet, I have somebody calling me names correcting me, calling me a heretic thousands and thousands of times. <clears throat> so, both are good. Teach on the internet. Listen to people be critical of you. Try to take something away from how they criticize you and try to make it improve you a little bit. Take what they say into consideration. 
But they called Paul a heretic just for believing the things that were written in the law and the prophets. Acts 25, Paul appeal, appeals unto Caesar. And Paul says something in Acts 25, 11. He says, For if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. So Paul believes in capital punishment. And he talks more about this topic in Romans 13, 3 through 4, where he says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So Paul talked about the thing of capital punishment a couple times. He's for capital punishment. The Bible's definitely for it. And then in Acts 26, you got Paul's defense before Agrippa. And he says something very cool in Acts 26 too. He said, I think myself happy. Paul thinks himself happy. Most people think themselves sad or they think themselves into a rage. Have you ever done that? Somebody made you mad and you just keep thinking about it over and over again until you go from being mad to just being in a rage. And then Paul says in Acts 26, 8 through 9, why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You see, before Paul was thinking of the evil he could do against the Lord and the saints, he said, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Now he is thinking himself happy. Paul started serving God and he got happy. That's how you get happy. You just go around, try to serve God, try to serve, serve others, and that's how you get happy. Then Paul says in Acts twenty six ten through 11, Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Notice that Paul compelled Christians to blaspheme. A Christian can blaspheme. A lot of people think if you blaspheme, then you're automatically lost. Not so. Acts twenty six twenty four. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. You see, when you learn the Bible and you start saying it in the world, out in public, the world will begin to think you are a madman. They said, Paul, you're mad. You're beside yourself. Much learning doth make thee mad. You know, if I told everybody that I came in contact with everything that I believed, they would think I was nuts. In Acts 26, 28 through 29, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. He was almost persuaded. Agrippa was almost persuaded. And almost persuaded will lead you to hell just as quick as complete rejection. In Acts 27, you got the shipwreck. In 1 Timothy 1.19, Paul said, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Don't make shipwreck of things. Trust Paul. He told them what was going to happen. In Acts 27, 9 through 11, it says, Now when much time was passed, and when selling was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with much will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. So they didn't trust Paul, and they made shipwreck. Just like that verse, that's what it reminds me of is that verse, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. For example, if you go to the Old Testament and read about sacrificing animals and you take that over the Pauline epistles, then you're going to make shipwreck. You see, these people in Acts 27, 11 says, Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship 
more than those things which were spoken by Paul. You know, the Old Testament law was our school master to bring us to Christ. And Paul is our apostle for today. He tells us New Testament salvation. So if you go to the Old Testament and go back there and you read about, well, I'm supposed to sacrifice animals and you do all these things and you take that over the Pauline epistles, then you're going to make shipwreck concerning the faith. You're going back to the schoolmaster. And you're trying to get salvation through that when the schoolmaster was just to lead you to Christ. The Old Testament is just as much the word of God, but Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice. Paul preaches the blood of Jesus and not the blood of bulls and goats. Listen to Paul first. Filter everything through the Pauline epistles. All the Bible is right. There's no errors in the Bible, but, but some of it was directed doctrinally towards other people. And... Some of it's directed doctrinally towards you. In Acts twenty seven twenty one. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. He said, Paul tells them, you should have hearkened unto me. And he says in 1 Corinthians eleven one, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So follow Paul. Acts 28, you got Paul at Mileta. In Acts 28, 3 through 4, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. So they think, Wow, He's uh, He survived a shipwreck, and now as soon as he gets off of the shipwreck, he's getting bit by a snake. So they think, wow, this guy must be a murderer because it's just bound for him to die. He escaped death one time, and now death's coming back around to get him again. And as a lost person, I watched all kinds of wicked movies I should not have watched. Now, I make a mention of a lot of movies, and that's because that's what my lost life revolved around, was movies and music and things like that. And there was a movie that came out when I was really little, like eight or nine, called Final Destination. And every time this guy would, he would like escape death, the very next day another thing would happen, and he would have to escape it again. Just he kept cheating death, and death kept coming back for him. And every Hollywood movie steals their plot from the Bible. Right here, you got this. They think this is a... These guys must have seen Final Destination. They think, well, he escaped the shipwreck, and now he's about to get bit by a venomous snake. So this shows Paul had the sign gifts of the apostles because he could get bit by a venomous snake and just shake it off. Just like... In Mark 16, where Jesus, Mark 16, 18, where Jesus said they shall take up serpents. You know, they could get bit by a snake. It wouldn't kill them. Paul was bit by a venomous snake. It wouldn't kill him. Paul could take up serpents better than any snake handler in the mountains of Tennessee. He could get bit by venom from the Marvel comics, and it wouldn't even be as, as bad as a mosquito bite. He had the signs of an apostle. And it says in Acts 28, 5 through 6, And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Nope, no god. He just had the sign gifts. Inspirationally speaking, when the serpent bites you, then you need to try and shake it off and keep going. Just like Paul did. You know, through your Christian life, the serpent's going to bite you, the devil. You're just going to have to shake it off and keep going for God. Then in Acts 28, 23 through 24, when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him in his lodging. 
into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. So Paul went through and shows them Jesus on every page of the Old Testament, in the law of Moses and out of the prophets. And this is something that the Lord Jesus Christ also did. It says on Luke twenty four twenty seven, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And remember back we saw Stephen give an overview of the Old Testament back in Acts chapter 7. And here we see Paul expounding and showing Jesus Christ in the scriptures. This shows me that doing these overviews and pointing out the types of Christ in the Old Testament and just doing overviews of all the books of the Bible, this is extremely beneficial and extremely biblical because you have Jesus and Paul and Stephen going back and giving overviews and just showing people things out of the entire Bible. Paul gave the whole counsel of God. He's not leaving anything out. Jesus wasn't leaving anything out. But around this time is probably when Paul wrote First and Second Timothy. And this is the end of the book of Acts. It was a long book. And I definitely didn't do it justice. It was the hardest one that I've done so far. But we'll move on to Romans next time.